Hello guys and welcome to App Screencast, Danny here. So in today's video I'm going to be reviewing and demoing an application called Videon for the iPad and iPhone. Now this application is for capturing video and also editing video. The reason I wanted to show you this application today is there's a lot of good photo applications for the iPhone and iPad but there's not so many good video applications and this is definitely one of the best I've come across. Before we get into me demoing the application I just want to let you know I've got free promo codes to give away for this application which the dev was kind enough to donate. So if you'd like to win a copy of this app then just drop a comment below and I will pick three lucky winners in about a week's time. So best of luck with that guys. Now let's get into the review and demo. So first of all I'm going to be showing you the capture inside of things where you can actually capture your footage. Then we'll move on to the video editing side of the application. So as you can see as soon as you launch the application you're straight into the video capture mode. It's very similar to the camera app already on the iPhone but you do have a lot more options on the screen which is quite handy to have them at your fingertips. So the top left hand corner you'll see there's a button to turn on the light and also we've got a readout of the battery and also the memory left on the phone so that's really handy to have that on screen at all times it would definitely be useful if you're shooting a lot of video also to the left side of the screen we've got the audio levels there um, in plain sight so making sure you're recording the audio and you're not getting no clipping so just like the camera app you can tap on the screen to focus on your subject also you can choose the um, exposure and you can choose different points on the screen for the focus and the exposure and you can also lock this in down at the bottom where you can see you've got AE, AF to lock the exposure and also the autofocus and also you can lock the white balance so it's really handy you've got really good manual controls over the camera and something worth pointing out is you can also adjust these settings while recording video to the bottom right corner you'll see the toggle for the zoom this is a 5 times zoom but bear in mind it is digital zoom so you will lose quality as you zoom in one nice thing about the zoom is you can zoom in while recording video. This is something you currently can't do on the camera app, though I believe that will be changing in iOS 7 where this feature will be coming to the default camera app. When it's time to record, you just hit the red button. You'll see at the top of the screen there's now a timer telling you how many seconds and minutes have elapsed, which is nice and clear. Also, while recording, you can pause the video and unpause it when you want to restart recording. So, this is handy, so it'll be just like one continuous video file once you finish recording instead of having like multiple um, video files on your phone so that's a really nice feature another thing you can do while recording video is also take photos at the same time so this is something you can do by default with the iPhone camera app if you've got an iPhone 5 but if you're using an older iPhone this is a feature what's not built in by default so this application will give you that feature which is nice finally on the capture side of things we've got the menu button bringing us to some menu settings to do with recording the footage so we can use which camera we want to use back or front we can also choose what resolution we want to record in. So for example, we've got this super widescreen resolution. So if you want to make your movies a little bit more cinematic, you can do. And obviously we've got some more standard resolutions there as well. Also we can choose the frame rate, which is handy. So if you want to maybe have that 24 frames per second, that's going to be great to give you, again, that movie look. But also you've got some standard frame rates there as well. So next up we've got video quality, so if you want to go for maybe a smaller file size to save some space on your phone you can do. Also there's a higher quality there which should give you a higher bit rate than what's normal on the iPhone, so that should give you a better quality video. Next up we have video stabilisation, so you can turn it on or off if you choose to. Then underneath that we've got a few other settings there which are quite basic. So now moving on to the video editing side of things. So to access the video editing side of the application you just hit the square in the bottom left hand corner and this will bring up all the videos and photos you've taken through this application. You can also import some videos in from your camera roll if you choose to. So you can tap on any of your photos or videos and play them. Um, you can even play them in full screen if you want. Also you can take a screenshot of the video you've just recorded which is nice. One thing I would like to say about the application, it does run really smoothly on the iPhone 5 and also the iPad mini where I've tested it on. So I've been really impressed with the performance of the application overall. So here on screen now you can see me selecting a video file and choosing to trim it. So very similar to what we see with the camera roll app already on the iPhone. But also what you can do with this application is choose multiple clips and join them together. So as you can see here I've got a clip 1 and clip 2 and I've chose to join them together. So in terms of merging clips and trimming clips this application is not quite as good as say the iMovie application you can get for the iPhone and iPad. But what I would say, as good as the iMovie application is, it does like a few tools you would like to see. And this application definitely fills that void. So let's have a look at some of them tools I'm speaking of. So you can add effects to your video clip. So you select the video clip, then you go to tools. And as you can see here, you've got a host of effects you can add to your clip. 
So let me run down some of the effects. So first one is speed, so we can make the clip faster or slower. So we can maybe go for two times faster or maybe two times slower. Anything up to minus 20 all the way up to plus 20. So that's really cool. Next up we've got reverse, so we can reverse the clip, play it um, backwards, which is nice. Next up we can adjust the exposure, so this will be really handy if your footage is a little bit overexposed or underexposed. So really nice advanced feature. Next up we've got contrast, so if you want to make your image a little bit more punchy, you can up the contrast or maybe bring the contrast down a little bit. Next up we can alter the hue, if you want to maybe alter the colour of your video. Then we've got saturation, so if you want to maybe boost the colour a little bit or maybe take some of the colour away from the video, you can do. Then we've got the vibrance, so you can again alter that, plus 100 down to minus 100. Then we've got the temperature, so if you want to make your image a little bit warmer, you can do, or maybe make it a little bit cooler. Next up we can alter the highlights, um, as you can see some quite advanced features in this application. Shadows, we can bring a little bit more detail into the shadows if we want to, or maybe make them darker. We've got an sepia effect, so if you want to give your footage a little bit more of a style to it, maybe a bit more an old fashioned look, you can do. We've got sharpen there, which I don't quite demo here, and we've also got straighten, so if your video clips are a little bit wonky, you can make it a little bit more straighter. Also we can resize the video clip. Um, this would be handy if you want to bring the file size down a little bit. Next up we've got quality, again relating to the file size if you want to lower the quality. So this would be handy if you want to maybe email the file or send it via message to someone. You might want to go for a smaller file size. And finally we can mute the audio if we choose to and also make the footage black and white. So there we have it guys, a demo of the application video on. So overall I've been really impressed with the application, in terms of its performance it's been really good, it's worked how you would expect, how you would hope for. In terms of capturing video I think it's definitely a better application than the standard camera app in terms of having a lot more controls on screen at once and then giving you a lot more options. In terms of video editing I think it's a really solid application there as well. When you look at other applications out there in the App Store when it comes to video editing, the, the definitive choice is obvious iMovie and that's a really strong application the way you can um, put um, video clips into the timeline, rearrange them, trim clips, slice clips up and so on. And that application is definitely the best in terms of doing that kind of thing. But, well, this application is kind of lacking there, but where this application does beat iMovie, in my opinion, is the effects and the amount of effects you can add to your videos. So. It's not like stupid filter effects like you get in things like Instagram and so on. They're actually really useful effects which are going to improve the quality of your videos. So where I think this application fits in is it's a really good companion to the iMovie application. So there we have it guys, there's my demo and thoughts of the application video on. Definitely worth a download, you can get it for iPhone and iPad, I believe it's a universal app. It retails for around £2, so it's definitely worth it. And there is, like I said at the start of this video, there isn't many good video applications in the App Store, and this is definitely one of the best. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.